What's up everybody welcome back to another video in this video today we're going to discuss the top eight decks in the recent biggest Union Arena online webcam tournament since release really it's been the biggest it was 64 players but really there was Eggman opened 15 more spots after uh, so over 70 80 players actually signed up so Already basically an 80 player tournament now obviously not 80 players played only 60 64 players But uh, yeah huge demand on tournaments right now and this is the top eight guys I actually joined the tournament as well So I'm gonna give you guys a small tournament report really quickly. I played the green hunter x hunter Kurapika, so I'm very excited to see the list that we're going to see today for the hunter x hunter Of course, we don't see anything in the top as you guys can see here because uh, yes, Hunter x Hunter did take a little bit too long to get to his seven sometimes, and if you missed one turn, these other faster decks really did take advantage of it, and so it was very surprising to see uh, these decks actually take it. And by the way, the top three decks are all similar; they're all the same. Looks like these guys were cooking a list uh, by themselves, didn't really uh, shoot out any. Uh, videos from my understanding they were just cooking their own list and it went from 18 games the total of the three was 16 2 so they actually only lost two games the whole tournament this deck was very fast very strong can do a lot of work against a lot of different uh, combinations and it really performed basically out of 18 games only lost two so it's very very strong deck here guys so let's go ahead without further ado Jump into the number eight spot here for Zach. He had the green hunter x hunter. I'm really excited to see this. We do see the set outs. We see 12 zeros with the Zeppile. He does see the Mito here. I'm not sure how useful this Mito is, but I guess you could use it with this Kurapika. Helps it push it up to that 4k number, make it a big threat for these uh, for the opponent. So that's possibly what that Mito is there for. Besides that, it's kind of uh, taking up space. That set outs could be fulfilling. Becoming, becoming a free uh, plus two if you trash him. Of course, you do see the combination of the Basho and the Kurapika. You have to, and also the Liorio, because you won't see a lot of Netero. A lot of these decks will not be running the Netero for the two energy. They will be running the Liorio, because uh, Toshiro is really a tough matchup already. And that's why you'll see this Liorio more often. Basho is 100% necessary. He's going to allow you to get uh, to that five... And at 5, you're going to be able to throw out your Kurapikas. This deck is running Hisuka, which is very interesting. A lot of decks are not. Looks like Hisuka is nice. Uh, I see it really towards the late game. A lot of other players are playing the Kilua. So basically, it's just a preference at this point. You like removal when the card lands, but you will have to use up uh an extra a ap or do you like to just have hisoka down to get a little bit extra draw and a, and a small threat it's just a preference at this point but yeah we do see the hisoka and then a kurapika here and then four four i think hunter x hunter i didn't believe in it but then i played games in the tournament where uh there's a the game where he played three hunter x hunter or basically lies bound guys behind each other and you can see the difference immediately. You can feel it. It's very hard for you to come back. Uh, even if when you do hit triggers, it feels like you're still behind, which is very impressive. So from now on, I really believe that you do need these Hunter x Hunters, Bankai's, all of that at 4, 100% guys. And of course, the special at 4. So really strong deck here. I think the Mitos are unnecessary. Besides that, very balanced, very strong, very similar to something I built. Let's go see the other one here. Number... Uh, uh seven liorio <laughs> very nice to see the liorio here we also see the ponzo here ponzo once he dies he draws a card very easy to kill your own units in this game wow very cool strategy here to draw we do see some netero here maybe this guy wasn't scared at all against that uh toshiro combo we do see he's running a different build where liorio is capable of coming out a little bit earlier a little bit uh, if there's early aggression maybe he's uh, can deal with it also gets a lot of draws out for the opponent uh, for for the guy but yeah as you can see no uh, very small number of kurapikas and yeah 12 uh, zeros and then of course your five lineup is going to be the neon kurapika 
the Basho and Kurapika is going to be your three lineup. The only uh, the only difference here is this Leorio is pretty interesting. Obviously, did very good work for the opponent or for the player. Did a lot of work and he's in seventh place. So really nice to see that Leorio. Very interesting strategy. Let's move on, guys. Our last Kurapika here. I think we're going to see after that we're going to see some really fast decks that were able to beat all the Kurapikas. There was at least 50%, I think, of the whole tournament was Kurapika. So here's the 12-0. Actually, it's the 11-0 lineup. Very interesting. I don't think it's very bad to run 11 zeros, to be honest with you guys. Leorio and Netero. So we see the combination here. This guy, maybe he couldn't make up his mind. <laughs> Obviously, there are some strategies that uh, are Netero is cool in and some strategy Leorio is better. So I see why the 2 for 2. The Kurapika only at 3, the 2 cost Kurapika. Uh, maybe he doesn't see that impact being necessary. I believe it's extremely strong pressure playing this out early. Maybe it's not really useful early on and if the opponent doesn't deal with it later on in the game, it's going to become a threat. And then Kurapikas and Basho, yeah, so you have to be able to run this. If you don't, obviously your deck is not going to be running right uh, because you're trying to get to 5 and then to 7. Interesting, this guy is running one less Neon, which is very risky because you're already trying to high roll Neons. If you don't get your Neons, you really are going to have a hard time activating your deck. Because then you're looking for two Bashos or two Karapika. It's almost impossible. Uh, especially if you're running a smaller number of Bashos. So it's very interesting to see the Neon at a small number. But he was trying to fit in Leorio. is very interesting. This other Leorio as well, guys. What he does is he lets you draw a card from your trash. So maybe if you used up a Karapika, you can bring it back. Get one extra removal on the board. Very nice strategy. It's a little bit more expensive though. It's at two action points. So you really want to only use it with the Hunter x Hunter license or at a time where you've been already set up the turn before. But uh, Leorio is pretty interesting. You can play him at the front, becoming a guard for you. Playing him at one, I think, is unnecessary in this game. Uh, just playing him at one means you're never going to see him. Uh, and this Hisoka at one means you're never gonna see him. So I think it would have been just better to perfect your uh, ratios, but obviously it's worked out, worked out for him very well. Uh, Leorio is very interesting. I think actually not might not be bad as long as you can get a lot of Hunter X Hunter licenses in your hand. This Leorio can really do well because he just acts as a blocker and he gets you the Kurapika, and you can play that Kurapika that same turn. Very interesting. You get two bodies on the board with one Leorio, but three action points. Very interesting. But yeah, guys, let's move on, guys. Now we're going to get to the purple bleach. This is the fifth place purple bleach. It's not the aggro bleach that the uh, top three are going to play. It's just a little bit of a different build. This one is going to run uh, strictly bleach, but we do see the soy fawn in there. We do see that removal of the Getsuga Tensho for Bankai's as you... Uh, I think the best decks are going to be running four finals. He he does get some uh, draw power with the Department of Research card there. We do see only two impact Ichigo to balance out the Ichigo. So that means he's going to run 12 Ichigos. And then six uh, Raid Ichigo. So yeah, perfect balance there. Uh, two Soyphones. Interesting. I think Soyphone... I'm just surprised. I don't know where... Maybe it's good against Toshiro. You can get rid of those 3,500 3, uh, Toshiros and the side jeans. Uh, but I think it's just a little bit too slow uh, to be effective. I don't see it in a lot of decks. But look, it, it actually worked out for the player. Also, we do see that Rookie at 4 and then Orihime. Only two Orihime? Okay, so he... How many twelve? How many zeros is he running? 12 zeros, only two Orihimas, and then he's running the Kisokes as well for a little bit more energy at two. And then he's running 4-4 four, four Rukia. So Soyphone is really the only interesting uh, card here. Uh, I think it might be valuable, actually. Let's you remove something or force the opponent to start blocking really early. It's I think it's actually perfect for the mirror match, I think, what this is for. Like, uh, for example, if you're going against Reggie's, the 3,500 uh, Reggie's, and if the opponent has two of them on the board, they're very hard to deal with. 
and I guess Soyphone is there to, to kind of break that chain. Very interesting card. I really like Soyphone. I think it's a little bit slower, uh, and obviously this meta is very aggro, very fast. But as you can see, it's performed really well in this deck. It's uh, top five. Moving on, guys. Number four here. Toshiro. Toshiro is really strong. I think Toshiro is a really strong matchup. Let's look at this deck. Uh, we got three Retsu, one Nullifier. Uh, interesting. Four Toshiro and the three of the Joshiro. I think Joshiro is very interesting. I think you're necessary in the deck. I don't think the steppers are necessary in the deck as Joshiro would be. Because there are turns that just... You just need to get to 6 energy for one turn for the whole game. You literally don't ever need to get to 6 energy ever again. For, there are some games you don't ever need to be 6 energy for the rest of the game. You just need to get to it once and then never ever enter it again. And therefore, that's why Joshua shines. He just gets you there in, even if you don't have the cards necessary. But uh, even if he's not there, look at the cards we have here to support us. Ooh, very interesting. The Toshiro and the Retsu are very small numbers. So maybe we're not relying on them a lot. We are, but uh, we're just running six Toshiro for four Raiders. Usually we see eight for four, but this is a much small number of Toshiros. But uh, obviously it's worked out very well for him. Izuru, we don't see that uh, one cost uh, two energy card, so we only see the Izuru here. And then the Shinji at three, so he really is looking for the impact size. Jin only at two. Preferring the Shunsui over the Sajin at 3. Very interesting. Usually we see Sajin at 4 and maybe a 2 of Shinsui. Sometimes not at all. Instead we see a bigger number of Izurus. Uh, but yeah, look at this. Very interesting deck here. Uh, very interesting ratios. Uh, I'm so surprised. It's, it's done really well here. 3 Zimpakis. Zimpaki I think uh, at 3 is very cool it does really good against purple decks so that's why you need it at three two of the five cost uh, yamamato that gets you that sixth energy for you to get into the onohana uh, only running three onohana a little bit risky but he, as you can see he's not running a big number of onohana is only six six for three kind of cool there and then he really just wants to get to toshiro once or twice in a game so that's why he's maybe running a small number of Toshiros. Also, it's very necessary in every Toshiro deck to run 13 courts. It's very, very necessary. What you do is you play your whole hand really early and then you replenish uh, with the 13 courts. Or if you don't have the cards you need, the 13 courts uh, in your hand is early. Court guards, then you can just use them uh, and uh, get the cards you need. So there's so much good strategy you could do with this card. It's very necessary. And then 4-4. Four, four, yeah, very strong deck. I think the ratios for maybe a beginner player could be a little bit more simple. But obviously, uh, this is just for you guys to get inspired. Look at that top four Toshiro. Besides that, guys, we're going to skim through the top three really quickly because they are all the same deck here. Uh, performed very well. Very strong ratios, guys. What the idea behind this deck was is basically this. there's a reason why you have so much two energy uh, pushers. Is because you're going to push out your zero costs ver very early. You're going to get the zero costs just to give you the, uh, enough energy so you can push out your Kisukos and your Orihimas on the board. Then you're just going to start pushing out everything and start attacking as soon as possible. When the opponent starts to try to deal with your small units which are useless to deal with. Or he plays units that are a little bit bigger. That's where Renji comes out or Ichigo comes out or you start dropping down Getsuga Tensho immediately. Stop dropping down Getsugas so your smaller guys can keep going through. As long as you can, you can get two attacks per turn, maybe start with three. As long as you can get the opponent to five or four life. Uh, you and uh, get one or two removals per turn, you will be able to get two extra life per turn. So within two turns, you should be able to win the game. So within three turns, so as long as you get your opponent to five early by turn three, you should be able to win the game by turn six. So it's very, very quick deck and just has enough removal. And if it doesn't, have removal then we have the ichigo impactors here to win as the game and 
and just get us to that uh, victory we need. Now, the number of rookie here we're going to run is much smaller. And I guess this rookie is just down here just to be played out. Because you're just going to play out units so you can bait the opponent to kind of deal with the Rukia while the Ichigos are going to kind of come out to deal with whatever just came out. But yeah, the deck is very fast. It's a very interesting strategy. All three decks are exactly similar. All of them performed really well. And what the idea behind this guy is you're just pushing as much power as, as early as power as fa as early as possible as fast as possible. And the Renji is just there so, to just get that early speed, early push, double damage, early. Uh, because, uh, for example, think about this. If you are turn two and you have a Getsuka and a Bankai and you have the Renji and the Renji, then uh, you could Getsuka, Bankai, drop a Renji down and, and go for the second Renji and raid the Renji. And now you have double damage. Uh, if you have another Bankai and you're still at 2 AP only. That's how fast this deck is. It can start pushing double damage really early. Now the opponent has to actually pull out his units and deal with your Renji. And all you have to do is deal with that small little unit he dropped. Because you already have a Renji on the board. And uh, you see how fast this deck is. It really relies on dropping that double damage Renji down. And removing your units really early so they can utilize that double damage Renji controlling you and then late game they can impact or remove small units so they can end the game very very fast deck guys but yeah that's it for the tournament very exciting tournament i did very bad uh <laughs> i'm very surprised how bad i did uh, honestly a lot of games i just did not hit triggers whereas my opponents really hit really well or i just misdrew but there were a couple of games guys that i really just got overtaking for example there was a toshiro game that i just felt like the opponent was just so fast i could not deal with it in any way so kurapika is a very strong deck but i believe that faster decks especially something like jjk is just going to be able to deal with it so unfortunately we will be seeing some power creep coming with newer sets get ready for that so you're going to have to play the newer game uh, sets for sure but the game is exciting. The meta is real. Purple uh, Hunter x Hunter can beat Green Hunter x Hunter. Toshiro is very strong against Purple Bleach. Purple Bleach is very fast. And maybe a Yellow can deal with that speed a little bit. Yellow Bleach. But yeah, guys. That's why I'm very excited about this meta. Uh, I don't think it's all Green Kurapika like we thought it was. Interested in your opinions? Leave them down below. See you guys.